Hi, I'm Michael Joy. Welcome to another reaction video. I want to say up front here, if you're a subscriber or catching this video randomly, just know that this is a mold making video. We make a lot of content here and I'm a professional mold maker. And so you may or may not want to be on this bus if you're interested in some other things. But for the makers out there, get ready. Welcome to a very interesting reaction video for the mold makers out there. This is tying into our series of manufacturing, where I'm going to be critiquing and embellishing some things about mold makers that I found on the internet and use their good skills or not so good skills to have some reflective commentary. And I came across this guy here. Again, I will have to bring up his name, Hammerly Ceramics, I think is what it is. And this is a very capable young man who is using technology with his molds. Typically plaster molds for ceramics are old school technology, and I like that he's doing some 3D printing. So we're going to get into this. You ready, Kay? Aye, aye, Captain! <clears throat> All right, before I start, this is my favorite part. I get to look at their studio here and see how organized they are. I would say highly organized. Ceramic studios are typically dusty, messy things, and he looks like he has a place for everything. He's got good shelving, he's got some strong tables. I see tool bins in the back. This is great. I think we're gonna be off to a good start. Hey everyone, I'm Kurt from Hammerly Ceramics, and I'm in the studio today, and I'm gonna try to start doing videos like this, um, hopefully on Saturdays, that are pretty casual, Low editing, just to kind of get no, low editing on YouTube. <laughs> so today I want to talk about one of my new designs for the year. So this is my brain coral design. This is from last year. The surface texture is made by a guy I worked with, Greg. He makes it in Grasshopper for Rhino. And this year I wanted to update it a little bit and I was really excited to finally try and get some texture on the handles. This is great. So to carve this by hand as a ceramicist would be pretty tedious, but to make the models out of uh, 3D printing, I think is a great collaboration of skills. And clearly he needed someone else to run the program. Some of these 3D modeling softwares are not intuitive, especially for a potter. And um, I really like the look here. This would date out, but I like where he's going. But you can also notice that the texture itself is a little bit bigger scaled. And I think that that plays a lot better with the glazes. Nice handles. It's just gonna work a lot better. It feels better in your hand. And this just said something really important, not mold making related. And that is, is it feels good in your hand. Some people will make cups that are beautiful and then you end up putting a little finger in there to hold it or the handle's not big enough to hold the volume or that the cross section of the ceramic of the mug is too thin and it transfers heat too much and you're like, ow, 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 I can't touch it. So there's a lot more than just good looks that go into the designing of a mold. You have to have good design from the very beginning because you're gonna make molds anyways. You may as well mold something that works. This mold system in particular, I'm really excited about. It's going to be moving forward into other textures and other sizes as well. But I just wanted to go over kind of um, why I made these changes, how I made these changes, um, some of the other changes behind the scenes from other years if you've been following for a while. Hmm. But this is my 2024. 16 ounce brain coral mug. So first of all, beyond the actual design itself, I have done a couple different things this year. The first one. Okay, so there's a few things. He said he wanted to go simple on the editing, so I'm being respectful of, of knowing what it takes to cut out all these little pieces to make a video go fast. Okay, you do that for me, thank you. And, but what I'm noticing is that he's referencing other videos that he's already made, so I highly recommend everybody drop in on his uh, shop. He looks quite capable. And, but he is gonna be talking about different timelines of master molds and things like that. So I'll try, to, I'll try to bring the timelines together. Is changing what I make my mother molds out of. This mm -hmm. is a product called Vitaflex 60. It's a poly. So what he's talking about right here is, if you remember the French guy that we just followed, he made a two-part bowl mold. And if he wanted to make that fast, he would have taken one half of that mold put it on the table, built a box, and poured urethane rubber over it. 
to completely encapsulate it. And we have this big blocky thing that this guy, Kurt, it has. And then every time that he wants to make another plaster half, he just pours plaster into this master mold and he's done. And he makes all these plaster parts. He can scale these molds really fast by duplicating each plaster section with one of these, what I call a block and case, which uh, is, is an old phrase for something else, but it's, it's good reference. So he's talking about the type of materials and some distortion that can happen. Urethane from Smooth On. Before that, I was using um, Smooth On Mold Max 40. Polytech is also an excellent company. A lot of people talk about Smooth On, but Polytech is, is really good for artists. For years. Ah. It's worked pretty well. It has some properties that are absolutely amazing. Um, nothing sticks to it. It's easier to cast with. And it has enough flexibility that you can pull the mold pieces out of it. Mm -hmm. But the weight of the wet plaster is significant enough. So what he's talking about is if you look at the side walls of his yellow mold, they're a certain thickness. If they were thinner, when he pours plaster in, the plaster would create pressure and it would, what we call bagging, it would push the sides of the mold wall out and that creates distorted edges. Now, in some molds that have many pieces that go together like his, those edges are actually registration points. And if, if his master mold warps, his plaster mold will not fit together well. That it was causing a uh, slight enough warping that mm. my plaster molds always had some um, issues at the seams where they didn't fit together perfectly. So what I've done this year. All right, I want to say right there, this is what I mean by not all people that are good designers and good ceramicists know very simple tricks about mold making. Let's say he, if his mold is, I don't know, three pieces there and they all don't quite fit together correctly. If he had taken all those pieces while the plaster is still wet, meaning it's set and it's hard, but it's not completely dry, and he put those together and then he cranked some really tight molding straps around it and then he put it on the rack, that mold will warp back into shape and it will actually move and close up those seam lines. But if you let a mold, when you pour mold sections in a master mold and you let them dry separately or not tight enough together, they are gonna warp and distort on their own. So it's a simple fix. He took the hard way. Is changed over to this Vitaflex 60, which is a lot firmer. And what I've done with the designs is that now a, these um, master molds and these mother molds are designed so that... So he's 3D printed this part pieces out. So and I'm gone actually, right to I'm the master mold. Right here, but I'm using compressed air to pop them out. So the two sides here have a little bit of a draft angle. I think it's like one or two degrees, but mm -hmm. it's just enough that a blast of air will push the plaster out of this without... If you haven't made molds before, what he's saying is kind of up there. And um, he's just talking about ergonomics of, of, hey, now I'm getting into the finesse of each mold section because each mold section is coming from a mold. And now I've made that master mold rigid, which I would not do. Uh, in this instance, I would keep it very flexible and I would do the workaround I mentioned previously with the straps. Having to deform the mold and worry about having it hold that shape and then the pieces don't meet up like that. And that has led to a lot better plaster mold. I'm really, yeah. really excited about this here. So if you have seam lines in your mold, and remember he has a texture, so his seam lines, what happens is, is the ceramic will go into those gaps and then he's got to clean them out. And on this brain coral texture, you could spend a lot of time cleaning that stuff out. And even when you clean, clean up the seam line on ceramics, some, some porcelains, um, the seam line after you fire and then they'll raise back up. There's uh, specific molecular reasons for that. I can explain that later, but basically you want as small a seam as possible when you have high textured surfaces. Excited to make some bigger stuff, some more high resolution stuff. He's got a nice stuff. foot on there, removable foot, it is the that circle. Cubic M5 He's got the handle. M5 3D printing Pro, makes it look clean. And it's a lot higher resolution, so I have some. I wouldn't have put a uh, key, really his cool keys like that in the for. foot. You can lock your mold the together. The other thing about this year is that adding the complexity to the handle, this is the handle mold, and adding that texture piece on has made my handle molds um, three parts, which is cool and it's exciting, but when you add more mold parts, it mm -hmm. adds um, more work and more time. 
but it is definitely worth it in my opinion. So now one mug. So if you think about this, if he has a mold and one of those mugs is a, hand, a handmade mug is maybe 40 or 50 bucks, it's in his best interest to have 20 molds because then he can pour 20 mugs at one time. Because when you pour liquid slip into the plaster mold, it has to set for maybe an hour. It's, in, it's occupying the mold for about an hour. So you could do maybe six flips a day if you're handy and you got some help in the shop. But the more molds, the more money. This is, this is why mold making matters. Mug in total is eight mold parts. And we have really That's efficient ways to cast them and really efficient ways to clean them up. Uh, the beautiful thing about the resin printers and the polyurethane mother molds is that the seams are fitting really tightly. So these mm, He said SLA, resin printing, very, not filament. Very little flash and cleanup. This one came out of the mold yesterday. It, it has had the handle attached, but since then it has not had any of the flash. I hope he shows the yet. interior. I so want to make a point about that. the interior sure shapes like this. What, uh, the flashing looks like because right out of the mold it's pretty impressive it just takes a little bit of time we okay. wet lap the top of this Let on me the table stop right there so you see the texture of the outside of the mug is mirrored on the inside of the mug as well just due to the properties of slip casting what happens is in if you get into deeper texture it's hard to wash the inside of your mug now not if you have a dishwasher or things like that but if you've ever seen those little ceramic cows they're a little dairy creamer and the cow stands on the table and you pour the cream in there and then you know it has this little tiny opening in the back you can't get anything in there to wash those out and those little legs end up to be bacteria traps this mug is wide enough where he can wash the inside but that texture does leave the potential for collecting more bacteria so it's in his best interest to have that wide open mouth so that dishwashers can uh, get in there and then we will clean up these seams with a tool and a sponge and a minute or two or a couple minutes later, it'll be cleaned up and ready to bisque. So that's really the big changes for the molds this year. Um, I'm gonna start showing off other designs and other videos. I wanna keep this short and sweet, but I am right now picking uh, what glazes I want the initial mm -hmm. offering to be in. These are three potentials. It's probably going to be these two and a slight variation of this one. This is great because the same shape looks like three different things. You know, when you have the dark one on the far right, the dark is absorbing all the detail in the sense of it's not creating the shadow. So it's really terrific how glaze can make a piece uh, for sure. Um, my handles have also changed a lot this year. Um, handles uh, matter. <laughs> here is one of the ones from last year. I'll get a close up of this as well. Oh, stackability. I completely redesigned my handles from the ground up, um, not just adding the texture, but the handles themselves are a little bit different. Some people don't think about that as how is your mug gonna stack, not just for in somebody's shelf where they may not stack it, but how does your piece pack? How does it display at the store? How does it display on your shop? Is it um, in your gallery? You know, sometimes stacking matters, sometimes it doesn't. Shape, I have dove into um, sub D modeling in Rhino. It's something that I've only mm. done for one other project before, but it ended up working. I never really, got into really the programming. Well it's beyond for me. For the handle modeling, I was able to kind of change it on the fly. I printed out one prototype that unfortunately is at home, but that prototype had some issues that I iterated through and was able to print three prototypes and land at what I wanted and changing the geometry just slightly. What, what I'm learning here in watching this video, because I like it's, it's well lit, everything's great about it, but you can see the glazedness in his eyes. He's actually visualizing all these other things that he's built. And in the video, I need to see those things because he's got them in his mind and um, it would be very helpful to present that. But all these things, all these assets take time to put into videos. And I think people who haven't made videos about making something, they don't realize it's like, damn it, I just made the thing. Now I gotta make a video about the thing. And it's, uh, it's, it adds a lot of time. So I wish there was more, but I get why there isn't. Lately with the way that I modeled this one from years before, it was really a pain. And a pain. using sub-D modeling <laughs> in Rhino has been- Enter the word expensive. So this one for my hands is either three fingers like this mm -hmm. or three fingers like this. That's good. The key on the bottom there feels really you good. You have to be able to the manipulate texture. these mugs, right? Two fingers so feels good. he's good. He's thinking about that. Yeah, I 
can't get four fingers in there, but um, someone with smaller hands definitely could. So um, I have been using this one for about two weeks now, and I really like how it feels. I like how it looks. Um, ah, I also, I guess I should also mention that I modified the foot. Um, uh, in addition nice to adding the new year, 24 versus 23, the foot itself That's is nice. about a millimeter more narrow and about half a millimeter um, more shallow. Um, depth millimeters wise, for a potter. Really you never used to hear potters talk about millimeters matter. dramatic matter. difference on the outside, but on the inside, the dip where the foot is in the cast pieces um, comes out a little cleaner with this thinner foot. So again, those... So you gotta imagine, let's say this guy pulls a contract with um, a high-end company to sell these bespoke molds, if you will, and they order a thousand of these, and he makes a thousand of them, but because they're inconsistent in some way, or maybe it doesn't sit flat on the table and the person buys the mug and it rocks on the table, processing a return can cost more than it did to actually make the mug in the first place. All of the paperwork, all of the hassle, you gotta send out another one, you gotta do, oh, oh. So this consistency is really important when you begin to scale. If you're selling onesie twosies in art fair, who cares? But when you get these contracts, you're a bit of a design slave are my brain coral mugs for the year. I'm really happy with this design. I like this and design. And hopefully I can actually it's very stay playful. on top of it and um, make more of these videos. You know, so, coffee, brain. You know, let me know yeah. down below what you think. If you have any questions and all that other YouTube stuff I'm supposed to mention, um, I'll get better at this. this yeah, is, he's, this like, he's like me. Uh, when I subscribe get into my and studio, dingling. What do you what do? You do you know? Who cares? I, I love YouTube for my own purposes and watch it every single day various channels that i subscribe to and have for years yeah. so it's something that i'd really Kay's like in the background he's not mic'd today but he's saying work. that this guy has a lot of videos and they're nicely he's made watching. and he's getting we'll get better it. and better at it so i like his spirit so let me close on this even with the mold making for plaster for ceramics which typically was what was referred to as kind of a primitive mold making exercise meaning it, it hasn't changed in years there's a precision to it but this is a, one of the of the generation this guy's of the generation where he's integrating some 3d printing technology and then migrating it into an old slip casting process but he still has to overcome the same issues of the design the pour ability the ergonomics of scalability so he still has the similar issues but he has the freedom to design in these wonderful, wonderful surfaces. And I hope we see more of it because there's many people who are taking the time to make a mold of a mug of something like that. And it's just not interesting. I mean, if you're making mugs these days, damn it, you have a hundred years of people making mugs before you. So you better be pretty unique about it. And I, and I really think that it's worth it to be unique because you got to go through the same steps anyways. You got to have a shop, you got to have kilns, you got to make molds. Why not make something special? Express yourself, not just uh, flower pot stuff. This guy is clearly at that level. So I'm going to enjoy watching some more of his videos. So I give him the mold makers high five. Nice job, Kurt. Thank you for watching this video. We're getting ready to launch a new platform called Handufacturing. It's going to feature a lot more educational films about mold making and casting from very basic to advanced mold making. Our hope is that it helps the business entrepreneurs out there learn efficient ways to manufacture their products and bring a lot more wealth into their household. Stay tuned.